Hi everyone and uh, Christy, thanks for the introduction. Um, welcome to our webinar, Teaching, Coding, Game Design and Creativity with Game Maker. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Today, we're going to look at the different methods of teaching Game Maker at different stages as students progress through their education. So to the agenda, we'll start with a brief overview of Game Maker and then look at the approaches to teaching game design, including feedback from our teachers following a survey we did in November, 2020. We will we'll then look at the different approaches taken for different student age groups. And for each age group, we will move on to the challenges brought about by COVID and how to adjust to home learning. We'll look at the approaches to licensing and privacy, including the licensing support we, we are providing to schools during the COVID, and then finish up with a Q&A and how to get your free license. Before we get to the educator resources, I'd like to provide a brief overview of GameMaker Studio 2. First developed in 1999 for use in education. It's an easy to use 2D game making tool. Being 2D is much uh, is important for learning because it removes much of the complexity associated with 3D and allows for faster progress. Drag and drop, or you'll hear me refer to it as D&D, &D, um, uh, for no code development. So students firstly understand the fundamental building blocks and then they can progress, can, uh, can progress to coding when they are ready, letting them progress seamlessly without hitting a wall. And custom language, GML or game maker language, this JavaScript like language is based on C and designed to be easy to pick up and use for games design and simple. Game Maker includes an image editor, sprite editor, object editor, and room editor. It also now includes the sequences animation tool. There's free teacher resources that teach the fundamentals of coding and help students to build their own game step by step. We have a large active community with a forum and social media and beginner tips from the pros. We have big studio credibility. Students can see hundreds of real games with many multi-million selling games made with Game Maker. The link here takes you to our showcase with award-winning games. Over 1,500 new users register every single day with 90% of them being beginners. So while Game Maker is a professional tool, it is at the same time a foundation tool. So we sent out a questionnaire to our teachers at the start of November, 2020. The responses are consistent with when we asked the same questions back in 2019, with planning, individual confidence, and learning engagement all scoring more than 75% when it comes to being rated somewhat effective or better. When we asked how effective are games design lessons at teaching the following, you can see the positive results on the slide. And one interesting one there is the student teacher bond is well over 60% into 65%. I'm often asked what age Game Maker is taught at. Today, we're going to look at approaches taken broadly at ages 12 to 14, 15 to 16, and 17 plus. Here's broadly how teachers approach the teaching of game design from a survey of educators who use Game Maker. As you can see, the teaching of Game Maker is very hands on, so it suits kinesthetic learners. This is probably why we hear that students who struggle to engage in other areas of the curriculum are much more motivated to engage with game maker game design lessons. I was recently talking to one of our teachers who provides alternative provision to children who have behavioral difficulties and who can't be accommodated in mainstream education. And he was saying the Space Bubbles video tutorials, which are part of the free educator materials, are at the right level for his students. There are three approaches to teaching that I'm going to cover in this presentation. First, in blue, is making a game step-by-step -step using video. This is an approach that solely relies on video tutorials where users build and extend games from no knowledge using drag and drop, and then progress into making these games using GML coding. This is, this is more appropriate for home learning situations, out of school camps or clubs where there's no formal framework needed for learning code. The students are learning the skills in a more hands-on way, so educators need to provide some structure to, to what they've learned after using the educator classroom materials. This requires less educator input. Then in orange, making a game step-by-step -step with, with the teacher leading, where the educator provides guidance on teaching of coding to fill a school curriculum, and this is enforced, uh, reinforced with step-by-step -step tutorials. Uh, it comes with an assessment structure and homework. This is the approach taken by our educator resources and will require the educator to run online tutorials to go through the slides. And finally, in green, we have the approach of setting a project for students to interpret. 
This is generally the approach we see taken with those aged 15 to 16. This is actually the most popular approach and is used in more advanced curricula where students are required to show creativity and practical implementation of programming. For this approach, I will show you the resources that can provide guidance and inspiration. So this is how teachers evaluate the progress being made by students. Our free tutorials include fully documented teacher and peer evaluation criteria. Assessing progress can be difficult part of home learning and GameMaker enables easy sharing of games so educators can check progress. In a previous survey, we got some great feedback from educators on how using game design has aided education, the education process at their school. The kids are happier in class, there aren't behavioural problems like in other classes. Game, games require creatives and tech teams to work together with a common goal to solve. While they build games, they also build friendships, learn to overcome hardships and create something meaningful. My students very much enjoy the game design units that I teach. Personally, I think game design is effective at improving problem solving, attention to detail and teamwork. The students have learned to solve complex or abstract problems by themselves. The content provides a sufficient challenge and helps develop persistence and attention to detail. It is certainly enabled some students who are otherwise disengaged from the curriculum to re-engage. Okay, so what about the students? Uh, what do they get out of it? What do they enjoy most of all? Definitely the end when they finally tried their get their own game, even if it was the most simple game in the world. Learning to overcome challenges and have a working program. The students love to show their parents what they have made by themselves. They're very proud if they get their ideas done and improve their skills. The feeling of accomplishment when completing a game and watching others play games that they've built. Just being able to create an original game, then watch their peers play the game is such a high for these kids. To be able to say, I made that is a real ego boost. Creating games, making rapid progress in a short span of time. Thinking up new games, brainstorming is normally a pain to get students to do, but not when it involves games design. And seeing their ideas take shape. Looking at different styles of teaching at age 12 to 14, school curriculums are mainly focused on teaching students the fundamentals of coding and giving them engaging ways to enable them to put it into practice. And to this end, we created space bubbles for an education environment. There is a list of everything included in the materials. Space Bubbles is a D&D project-based scheme of work where students work on one project over the course of eight one-hour lessons, with 30 minutes being spent on learning code and 30 minutes being spent on making Space Bubbles game. Over these lessons, students are taught how to program by recreating their own version of the game Space Bubbles using video tutorials. Aimed at children aged 12 to 14, but can be used for older and younger, and developed by Terry Watts, who is a teacher and formerly a game designer. In a home learning environment, these lessons can be taught using Zoom and the students can progress using the video tutorials. They are able to export their game, submit their game for evaluation by the teacher and complete the self-assessment forms. Each lesson has its own starter project. So if a student gets stuck, they can move on. Curriculum topics covered include programming key concepts and principles, sequencing, selection statements and iteration, and modeling the state behavior of real world problems and physical systems, for example, making hot chocolate in the homeworks, and also contains a teacher review, self review and peer review. Moving now to video tutorials, which don't require a teacher to lead. This is the first of our consumer tutorials where students can learn on their own. This game is based on the classic asteroids game for beginners with many of the same mechanics as space bubbles. It covers both drag and drop and game maker language. So you can make the game in D&D and then remake it in GML. This is an official tutorial made by one of our community educators, Friendly Cosmonaut. So it's a different teaching style and includes an intro to game maker. The focus of this is to retain engagement through quick wins. Uh, you create your ship and get it moving within a few minutes before layering on additional game mechanics. Space mods uh, builds on space rocks. It also has D&D and GML versions. This additional content can also support students who need more help with the Space Bubbles extension and challenge tasks. It contains power-ups, enemy ships, cameras, parallax and layered backgrounds for 3D perspective and visual effects, such as particles and screen shake. 
There was a nice comment here from a user who felt that they were able to start making their own modifications to their game once they completed the space mods. Breakthrough is a brick breaker game. It's taught for both GML and d and so students have the opportunity to develop the game with both methods. Around half of all projects being worked on in Game Maker are in d and so there's no need to go to GML until you're ready. This is a totally different style of game, but the teaching is still at beginner level. Firejump is our latest tutorial. It is a drag and drop full game tutorial that introduces the basics of Game Maker, Game Maker's d and system to create your own infinite platformer game. It comes as a four part tutorial series. Please check it out after the webinar. I click the link for more information. And on the site, there is a link to play the web version of the game. From the age of 15 to 16, we see the school curriculum focusing more on the creative application of coding. With project-based tutorials, you can set a theme and see how your students interpret it based on a marking scheme. The scheme could include the following, interpretation of the theme, complexity or functionality used, playability, coding, practice, coding practices, and creativity. Here are resources for tools, artwork, audio, etc., that can be used as the basis for game creation. The Global Game Jam resources at the bottom are particularly noteworthy as they run the world's largest game jam each year, which takes place over three days. We also have blog articles that can provide inspiration from our team and pro developers alike. These can fit in, with, uh, these can fit in well with the Space Bubbles and Space Rocks tutorials. They cover a wide variety of topics from planning, creating game mechanics, how to's, getting your game finished, and how to make your code uh, neat and much, much more. And you'll never be short of inspiration and guides for how to do things on YouTube. Here is just a sample of games and tutorials that can be found easily on YouTube. All Game Maker Studio 2 features and settings are fully documented with examples in our online manual. One of the problems with home learning uh, students aged 15 to 16 is that group learning and projects can be more difficult to achieve. To assist, we have official video uh, tools videos uh, that are accessible through our YouTube channel. These take you through all the tools, editors, and how they work. Watch this space as we'll, we always have more video tutorials and content coming. If you're looking for more a more expansive set of game tutorials, then this set of video tutorials start at beginner level using Game Maker language and then progress to intermediate. It also contains, uh, connects to the author's own video platform tutorials on YouTube. And this is Sean Spaulding's platformer, which links to ours and contains a further 27 videos on YouTube. We have new education materials that we've just released. This is a more detailed GML based game design tutorial for artists and people starting to learn game design at college or university, where you are guided on how to make a game called Little Town, an adventure playing game created by university lecturer and game designer Ben Rivers. Ben teaches game design for the Faculty of Design at OCAD in Ontario. These materials include a detailed booklet and video tutorials, which students can use to make the game in eight one hour lessons. There are about nine hours of video. We also provide guidance for educators on how to teach it and how to evaluate progress. Little Time utilizes more advanced functionality within Game Maker, including our sequences animation functionality. All licenses provided have access to sequences. For older students age 16 plus, there is also the facility to, for them to engage with our community for help with their projects using our forum. We have three types of licenses available, and these can be purchased through Studica. Educator, which is desktop. Educator Plus, Plus that contains the desktop exports and web. Uh, this is exclusive to Studica, as several schools um, they have worked, uh, they work with have requested the capability to export to HTML5. And we have Achiever, which contains the desktop exports, mobile, web, UWP, and now PlayStation 4. Uh, these licenses can run over one to two years. And the seats are concurrent use licenses, so they can be used for multiple classes. Game Maker can be used on a PC and Mac, not yet on Chromebook, but due to the overwhelming demand from these webinars, we have a version in development. As can be seen from a recent survey in early November, at the time, only 5% of teachers were unaffected by COVID. 
Uh, as a consequence, we have provided support to our users throughout COVID. Currently, until the end of June 2022, all seat licenses can be used by five students simultaneously. So 30 seats used in a computer lab can be used simultaneously by 150 students at home. Hopefully, we won't need to extend beyond June uh, because we'll be a safer place, but we will look at this nearer the time to see if measures need to be extended again. Privacy in education is important to us. Uh, the teacher acts as a seat manager. They receive one perpetual educator desktop seat that they can use to investigate game maker and understand setup. The, the seats are entirely anonymous, including the username and passwords, which are randomly generated. No PII is collected. There is more information in our privacy policy and a specific section on our approach to education. We are also approved for use by educationframework.com. As a thank you for attending our webinar and making it to the end, you're eligible to receive a free teacher license. Uh, Christy will send you a link or click on the button when, you, uh, when we send you the slides for step-by-step -step instructions. And uh, any questions? Hi, Stuart. Um, let's see what we have here in the Q&A. Um, as a teacher, I think we kind of covered this, but if we're looking to set up a program and get the teacher up to speed in what kind of support materials would they use? I think there's a lot included with those different tutorials. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Um, all the tutorials uh, and all the educator materials that we supply for free um, have information on how to uh, help the teacher set up the classes. In some cases, they have uh, information on how to um, mark and review the work um, and how to track through it and how to present. Some of them have, have whole PowerPoint slide decks to present through the class. So there's a lot of information in there on how to set up your classes. Okay, perfect. And Brian, yes, this presentation, I will be sending it out along with the recording. So you'll have access to all the slides and all the links that Stuart mentioned. Um, can students download GameMaker without creating an account? Uh, for sure, yeah. We have on our education page, we actually have a download option for people to download the license. Um, that works. The student can download the license, but they can't run it until they use the username and password that's created by the uh, seat manager, the, the teacher. Okay, perfect. And um, can the seats also be used for different after school activities? Yeah, for sure. So, for example, if a school has a computer lab that has 30 uh, computers in and they have 30 game maker licenses on those computers, um, they can be used during the day for classes and uh, for after school classes. That's not a problem. Perfect. And I think that's the end of the questions that we have. Okay, so I'll hand over to you now, uh, Christy. Okay. I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today and thank you, Stuart, for this presentation. Um, if you need any information on GameMaker, if you have questions, if you want a quote, please contact us at Studica. We'll be happy to help. Um, you can email us at info at studica.com or you can simply just reply to the email that I send to you for, you know, with the recording and other information. And other than that, thank you so much and enjoy your day.